Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. I'm here with Dave Hooker at Ridgetown College. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about interseeding cover crops in corn. And uh, Dave, you've been doing some work on this, but hey, let's let's go back. I want to look at a sign you have here. This is an old this is an old idea. It's been around for a while. Yeah, it sure isn't new, but it's perceived as relatively new in the agricultural community. And there's just lots of stories to talk about yeah. this newness versus old. Anyway. A few, a few weeks ago, I found an old sign back up in the attic on one of our storage buildings at Ridgetown. And this was the sign here. It says, interceding in corn put on by Ontario soil and crop and, and whatnot. And this was from, they tell me, in the early 80s yeah. that this was tried here in the early 80s, looking at grain and silage corn opportunities for, for cover crops. And um, the same kind of deal was mentioned. I, I tweeted this or somebody tweeted this and somebody said, hey, my grandfather has an interceder and this was way back in the 1950s. So the question that interceding in corn is new is totally false. And you sent out a, an interesting tweet, I think it was last year, where you had this this great um, picture of, uh, of cover crop growing in corn, had a lot of tweets. Yeah, that's right. So last year we just started a, a brand new project experiment looking at interseeding in corn with uh, myself and Dr. Bill Dean uh, in Guelph and Mehdi Sharafi in Trent University and Laura Venerd as well. And uh, so we're looking at the potential of interseeding uh, cover crops in the corn. So we're having a, a relook at this right. in terms of cover crop species. And it was just amazing. Last year we had an excellent cover crop stand. We had it planted with a, a special interseeder drill. We planted at the op, at the optimum timing, and uh, the crop was just fantastic. And I tweeted a picture on how fantastic it looked. Bernard, I kid you not, 100 or more retweets, like very quickly. But we had, last year, we had um, a very droughty August. Water deficits incredible was incredible. The corn was highly competitive. That cover crop did not like it. Yeah. And it had a negative growth rate. Um, a lot of those plants died yeah. of that cover crop. And you sent out a, a tweet of, yes. of a picture later on. And how many retweets did you get then? I think I've got two, maybe three. <laughs> So if, if you did a Twitter poll on whether a, one practice works or not, and if you looked at all the success stories on Twitter regarding interseeding, it might be painting kind of a wrong picture in terms of evaluating a risk for, for interseeding. Now Dave, we talked a little bit about the history of uh, interseeding, but you guys are doing some work now. Um, some research right here at Ridgetown and in Alora. Tell us about what you're learning. And so we have six location years already where we've tried to establish the cover crop. So red clover and then annual ryegrass and a mix of annual ryegrass and red clover. So last year we had two out of the three sites that we had, Alora and Peterborough, the cover crop looked decent. Mm -hmm. Like it looked like it would contribute to the soil health, benefit soil health. This year, of course, every year is different. Every location is different. So this year, in all three of our locations, uh, very dry, of course, early in the vegetative stages. The cover crops were planted when it was dry, and they struggled at all three sites to get out of the ground. And right now, just by looking at the cover crop biomass, maybe 100 pounds of the acre of biomass, that's what we have right now. And we're just wondering, you know, is that worth you know, a 30 or $35 an acre investment. Yeah. And, but time will tell, maybe August and September will be tremendous seasons for growth of that biomass and it will contribute yeah. to soil health. So I guess it's gonna, it's, the success here is really gonna come down to evaluating risk and the return on investment. Exactly, yeah. that's exactly right. right. Well, hey, um, thank you, sir, for a little bit of uh, the now and a little bit of the past and uh, uh, we'll look forward to the future. Thanks, Bernard, appreciate it. Oh, 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 oh,